Greetings to you. We are now uh, entering week six of Church History One, and I hope you're doing well. Once again, I want to remind you uh, to be working on your term paper. Uh, let me know what you're going to be uh, writing on, and I hope you're working on that. It's going to be due in a couple of weeks. So uh, anyway, and beyond that, I hope uh, you're enjoying the class. Let's talk today uh, about two topics that are um, not perhaps the most uh, pleasant uh, to talk about. They uh, show some of the uh, aspects of church history that, that, that uh, as Protestants may puzzle us. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, they're part of our heritage and are important for us to understand. And I'm speaking particularly of the rise of the papacy uh, in the medieval church, and then secondly, uh, the split that took place, the Great Schism that took place in 1054 between East and West, between the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. Again, not two of the uh, most uh, edifying of topics, but nevertheless, once again, it's very, very important for us to understand this. Now, when we start talking about uh, the papacy, the Pope, uh, it is uh, virtually impossible for us to understand or conceive of the Roman Catholic Church without... Uh, also interfacing with this concept and idea of the Pope, uh, almost synonymous. I know that in the Catholic mind that would not necessarily be true, but devotion to the Holy Father uh, is certainly at the core uh, of uh, Catholicism, and it's also uh, something of uh, a, a major division point between Catholicism and Protestantism and also Eastern Orthodoxy. So it's an important uh, aspect of history. How did it come about? Uh, again, I, I commend to you Shelley's text. He gives a, a good overview of that. But the first major pope uh, would be Leo the Great or Leo the First. As we talk about the rise of the papacy, um, it, it seems it's a story of three Leos. Uh, there's uh, Leo the Great or Leo the First, then Leo the Third, and then Leo the Ninth. Uh, let's talk about these for just a moment. Leo the Great uh, was uh, in about 440 to 461. Uh, very vivid uh, details of his rise uh, to prominence uh, in Shelley's text and how he withstood the advances of paganism. Now, the context, of course, is the fall of Rome and uh, the, 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 the fall of the emperor. The emperor, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, killed, drugged through the streets uh, by the barbarian invaders, uh, but the church stood, and uh, when all was said and done, when, when, when the invasions were over, all that was left uh, was the church. And with that, the one leader of the church, which was Leo the Great, and he uh, took the next step, which was to establish his authority by subscribing to Scripture, uh, not to culture, but to Scripture, and particularly Matthew 16 uh, and the words of Jesus uh, to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. And uh, he established something called papal primacy, and then from that we have what's called apostolic succession. There are three uh, segments, as you, uh, as you will, uh, of uh, Christianity that subscribe to apostolic succession. Those three are the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Anglican Church, or the Church of England. Uh, now, they don't all follow the same way. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church goes through the Bishop of Rome, uh, uh, the Eastern Orthodox Church, however, uh, though it was a breakaway, uh, does go back uh, to uh, the apostolic succession from Peter, and uh, because of uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury being sanctioned by Rome, uh, even though they broke away, the um, Anglican Church then uh, subscribes to apostolic succession. This is the leadership role of the church. Now, three Leos, Leo the Great, then Leo the uh, Third, which in 800 A.D., Christmas Day, uh, as uh, the entirety of Europe is in uh, uproar, and Charlemagne rises to power, and he wants to establish a united kingdom, in essence, spanning uh, Central Europe, 
Uh, but how do you get crowned when there's nobody to crown you? And so what he did was he uh, called for the Bishop of Rome, and that was Leo III, who came up signal moment whenever he placed the crown on uh, Charlemagne and the Holy Roman Empire was established. The third Leo is Leo IX, and uh, quite an interesting story associated with him uh, insofar as the division between East and West. I'm going to go to the second video to talk about that, but uh, God bless you in your studies. Uh, the three Leos, the rise of the papacy, it's uh, set the course for Roman Catholicism and would continue so uh, with dominance until the Protestant Reformation of the 1500s. God bless you.